What we want to do is we're gonna we didn't want to get you guys all slicing and dicing and all of that and have to wear cut gloves and spend a lot of time. Everybody everybody can dice up some peppers and onions, right? I think you can all manage through that. So what we decided to do instead was we decided to uh, just kind of take it through making a gumbo, okay? And we all sit and set you up so if you all want to make one, you can make one. And we actually decided to put it in this uh, in this kind of a pan over a pot just because it'll cook a lot quicker. It'll, it'll, get, it'll get going. We like to use a thick bottom pan because we don't want to scorch anything. So we decided to do this. We thought this one would work out well. First we're going to put the, the bacon into the pan and we're going to get that going. And uh, you know, I, I, once you get a little sizzling, spread it out, you know. Okay, if it's golden brown, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this wonderful big bowl of all these beautiful cut, uh, cut, cut vegetables. And we've got peppers, green and red peppers, we've got onions, we've got a little celery, okay? We're going to put it all in there. One thing about making a soup or, or a gumbo, a lot of food is you don't have to be exact with the amount. And now we're going to simmer this. Now that we got the now we got the vegetables and we can we can get it going a little bit more. You gotta put plenty of garlic. What's that gonna say? Put a little garlic in there or something? I always have to say, when in doubt, add more garlic. And you know what? Now we're gonna put the uh, we're gonna put the uh, we're caramelize a little bit, the onions in there, and the garlic's cooking in. In fact, you can even see the garlic probably getting a little golden brown in there. Now we're going to start to add some of the other ingredients. We're going to add the okra, okay? Everybody get the okra. And we're going to put the herbs. We're going to put, there's a little bowl there with a bay leaf in it, and some thyme. We're going to add that in there, all right? We're going to mix that in. There's some black peppers there. that was in there, right, Mike? Black, black pepper was right. That was right in. Yep. Everybody got a small spoon like this. We're gonna put about a half a spoonful of Tabasco sauce into that. Okay. It's gonna be a little work there to get it out. About a half a spoonful. We can always add a little more later if we want. Right. Get that in there. Now that we got that all in, just mix it all in good. Now I want you to put in the sausage. We got the andouille sausage, we're going to put that in. We're going to mix that in. Oh, that look good to eat just like that. We're going to put all the tomatoes. There's a bowl of tomatoes there, right? And we got some stock, all right? Everybody should have a pot like this. This is actually a little bit of fish stock. And we're gonna add that in. And now there's gonna be a little pause because we're just gonna let it come up to. It. Now we're gonna let it come up to a boil, right? Once we let it come up to a boil, um, we got this brown roux. And it, you know, the brown roux in there, it's a, it's a, it's a little pasty. But once we get it up to a boil, we're going to take the roux, we're going to put it in, just take it out with your spoon and kind of mix it in, and then you get the whip and just we'll just kind of whip it in and blend it in. But let's let it come up to a boil first. Okay, if yours is boiling, as mine is, you can take your roux and mix it in. Just uh, bring it, just take kind of break it out there, you know. If you dip the spoon in and get it hot, it'll come right, it'll melt right off it just about, because it's just butter and flour. You use a, a brown roux instead of a blonde roux because of a couple of things. First of all, a brown roux is going to give you a deeper, richer color, and good old gum gumbos have usually got a nice, deep brown, rich color to them. And the other part of it is, is when you brown that butter, you get a different flavor than if you just melt that butter. And that brown butter flavor 
just gives a, a nicer, just a nicer flavor to the whole thing. You get all that roux in there, then just pick up that uh, spatula, if you, excuse me, that whip, and just kind of whip it in a little bit. Just kind of help that roux blend through the whole thing. You'll start to see it thicken a little bit. The whole idea now would you, you would just let it simmer for about like 45 minutes. And obviously we don't have 45 minutes to stand here and watch it simmer. So, you know, we're going to go ride the mummy or something. <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna let it simmer just because it makes it all smell real real good um, but uh, really what we're just gonna finish it you know we're gonna go we're gonna skip the 45 minutes turn it into five minutes here and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna add the shrimp okay and you know and I'm sure you guys from New Orleans back me up if I'm wrong here but you know, you could put anything you want in a gumbo. You could put shrimp, crawfish, oysters, you could put a little chicken in it if you want. You know, same thing with jambalaya. It really becomes almost a dish where they just worked with what they had available close by. So that, and that's, if you look around the states, that's how what cooking is. I mean, you go out to California, you're gonna get a lot of beautiful dishes with Pacific fish and all the beautiful vegetables they grow out there and salads. You go up to New England and you're gonna get a lot of dishes with cranberries and corn and venison and rabbit and a lot of things that are kind of up in that part of the world. You go out to the Midwest, you're gonna get a thick old steak somewhere and some potatoes because they grow potatoes and they grow cattle out there. And you come down to Florida and you're gonna get, you're gonna get all that, 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 that cuisine of Florida with the red snapper and some of the things that trans kind of transmit over from the islands and, and you'll see the Cuban influences and you'll get you'll see things being made with papayas and mangoes and that thing and that's what it's all about with the regional cooking in the United States and and obviously with gumbo and jambalaya and everything it, it has some French roots to it because the French settled there in Louisiana but it kind of became their own kind of cooking and they found crayfish and in the mud of the Mississippi and you know everybody raises chickens and they made sausages, kind of what they did in France, nice kind of sausages. And next thing you know, they put them all together with rice, and they got jambalaya, and they got, and then they got dishes with etouffee, and dishes and the gumbos, the different kind of gumbos. So you got the shrimp in there, right? And we're simmering it. We're gonna add. We got some Tabasco sauce. We're gonna, we're gonna dump that in there. A little Tabasco, right? Now, the last part of this is the gumbo filet, which is in a, a bowl here. And really, you want to just, uh, you would do this just at the end. And you would basically just shut off the heat on it, all right? Which we have off on mine. You could do, you could do, and then you would just mix this up. And then you just kind of want to mix it in almost with the, with the whip. And just want to blend it in. Lovely. Now we got three. We basically got three more ingredients left on the table. We got some salt. We got a little bit of green onion, and we got some rice. Now, <coughs> obviously, the salt would be the taste. We all have a little bit of taste, you know. I smoked about eight cigars before I got here, so I probably need a little more than you all do. No, no. but um, you can just taste it. Now keep in mind, this has only been simmering for about five to seven minutes. We would want to simmer this about 45 minutes and it would be significantly thicker. Um, you want it a little thicker. It's a, hard, it's a very, very hearty soup, okay? And then, of course, you would add a little bit of salt to your taste, right? And then, you would it would be ready to serve. And you would have some boiled white rice that you would put in the cup either before you put the soup or after you put the soup. I tend to put the soup in and then put a nice big spoonful of rice right in on top of it and then sprinkle a few green onions on it and you're done. You know, and this one just has some shrimp and some andouille sausage. But again, like I said, if you wanted to put oysters, you would put them, if you had raw oysters, you would put them right at the very, very end because if you put them in too far in advance, they would cook, they would get like almost like chewing gum in there. You'd want to almost slide them in 
to me, with an oyster, it's such a delicate thing. You almost want to just, when you're ready to serve, just drop them in the last minute, just let them simmer in there for two or three minutes, and then let them go, and then serve them. Uh, again, crawfish, crawfish cook up like shrimp. Could be a little tougher, I think, in general. They're, they're, you know, but the tails of the crawfish are real good. They got a real fishy flavor. And you know, even if you wanted to put a little fish into it, you could even put fish. If you put it in, if you cook the, you, you almost want to cut the small pieces, and again, you treat that like the oysters. You put it into the left, to the very end, just let it poach up in it almost. Remember, fish is very, very delicate. It'll flake and fall apart, so you got to teach it. You got to be very, very gentle with it. But this one is a basic uh, andouille shrimp gumbo. Okay.